Okay, I have been wanting to show my editing process, I guess, for a while now. So I'm just gonna show you exactly what I do to edit. Um, I decided to draw something that was like very me to edit because I wanted to show you like exactly how I edit things. And so I just went with one of my flower haired aliens surrounded by a couple of bees. This is very much in my aesthetic and the type of thing that I like to draw. So I figured it'd be one of the best things to show you how I edit with. Um, if you want, I can also do one where it's a type of image that I can't stick in my scanner and edit and that I have to take a picture of because that might be a little bit different. But for this one, this is the image that I'm going to edit. Now, for anyone that is watching this, you need to know I do not know what I am talking about when it comes to the terms of some of the things that you can use to edit. So I like the way I edit my pictures and I like the way they turn out. And when I'm ready to print prints of them, they always turn out well. And when I upload the images to Redbubble or onto anything that I want to sell as merch, it always turns out well, but I'm not the greatest um, at knowing the terminology that is associated with the type of tools that I use to edit. So correct me if I'm wrong on any of those. Also, I'm going to be treating this um, editing process as someone who doesn't know much about editing. I'm going to be treating it as if I'm talking to myself the very first time I opened up Krita. So the very first time I opened up Krita, I was lost. I had never used any other editing software before. I think I had Corel for a little while, but I like barely used it. So I'm going to be like going not really in depth, but like I'm going to be speaking as if someone is opening an editing program for maybe like the first time maybe like the first couple of times you know so if you're into digital art this is not the video for you because you're going to be like girl get it together what are you talking about <laughs> if you want to know how I edit my pictures to the Instagram quality that they are or to the print quality that they are or how I get my images so crisp and ready to be posted online then this is the video for you and that is what I'm going to be showing you okay I edit using um, well, obviously I have a Windows computer, so all my software is like Windows stuff. So I edit, like my very first level of editing is in um, Windows Photo Gallery, so I use that. And I then I use Krita, which is a free editing program or free digital drawing type thing. Anyways, it's free, so there's that. <laughs> So if you want it, I will have the link in the description below. I don't pay for any of my software. So, you know, there's also that free stuff. Yay. Okay, I'm just going to get into the editing process because I'm talking a whole bunch. Bye. The editing process actually happens in the scanning phase. Right now, I'm just using my HP NV 5530. That's the scanner that I have. And I'm just going to open up the scanning thing <laughs> so that way I can scan my image in so the settings that I use I always use just the color output the item type is a photo the file type is a JPEG and then I always use my 600 dpi resolution and the reason why I use the 600 dpi it's not anything like spectacular it's just that one time when I was looking up the best way to scan in images for my red bubble shop someone said to use 600 dpi so that's just all I've ever kept it on because I might end up using these for my red bubble you know you never know maybe one day i'll update it so that's why i still just leave this on 600 dpi so i'm just gonna click the scan button and it's just gonna go through the process of scanning the image in so i'm gonna let it do that my scanner likes to pick up on the smallest of things and uh separate them out from the rest for some reason so i'm just gonna go to the main image here and i'm gonna select all the parts that i want to be put on that looks like the size of the page. I'm just gonna save this and it will save itself to my folder. And I think I'm on scan 57. I'm gonna try to keep this as like basic as I can. I mean, I don't know a lot of editing things, so it's not like gonna be spectacular the things that I do. And I'm also just pretty basic in the things that I do to edit. So it's not gonna be anything too crazy. And all of the programs that I'm using are free. Obviously, if you have a scanner, this is what you would use if you don't have a scanner. There's still a way that you can edit it. Um, and maybe I'll do one like that too. But basically, you would just take a photo of it and then follow the steps that I'm going to do with the photo that you would take. You would just skip the scanning part. 
once this pops up that means that my image is done scanning so i'm just gonna hit done on this scan profile thing i'm also gonna close this in the back because i don't need that and then i'm just gonna also close the file explorer and i'm going to open up um windows photo gallery and that's how i look at my pictures usually here you can see a bunch of uh, my older drawings and just some of the files I've used in my video files. Those actually need to be moved out of there because I keep those on a separate um, hard drive. But I'm just going to delete these bees because I don't need those. I don't need that bee either. My scanner just likes to pick up on those. And I'm just going to open the one that I just did. And so usually in here, I don't do much. I just go over to the right side. And if this is not available in your right side of the... Um, Windows Photo Gallery, you just have to hit fine tune. So if your page looks like this, you would just go up here to the top, hit fine tune, and then this will pop up. And then I just hit adjust exposure. And I don't do much in here. Basically all I do is bring down the highlights because I know when it's scanning the image, it's bringing the highlights way up, like it's lighting the image. So I'm just gonna, this is the middle, this is where it starts. I'm just gonna drag it down until I feel like the black is deep enough. Obviously the black is not gonna be as black as I want it to be, but I'm just gonna deepen it a little bit. And I'm going to take down some of the shadows too. And this is mostly like for the shadows around the eyes and everything. I'm just making sure my lines are as crisp as they can be. And then I usually up the contrast just a tad bit. But you don't have to follow the exact steps I'm doing. Most of the time my images are black and white with a little tiny bit of color. And so that's easier for me to like manipulate than if I was doing like a full color piece so these are the steps that I take for mine for yours obviously it might be something different because you might have a full color piece so I'm now going to close this file and that's just going to save all the changes I just made but if you ever make any mistakes in here you can always revert to the original file or just rescan it again so I'm just going to close this and I'm going to right click and then I'm going to open with Krita Okay, so once my file opens up in Krita, this is what it looks like. And so I'm just gonna take you step by step on the steps that I usually take to edit my pictures. I'm not saying this will work for everyone, but it might just give you a little bit of a basis on how to edit your pictures to like print quality photos <laughs> or not, because maybe I'm doing it wrong, who knows? <laughs> So the first thing I do is I go over here to the left side and then I use this uh, selection tool. So it looks like a wand with an asterisk on top. <laughs> and so I just click any area that's white because the first thing I want to do is get rid of the background. So once it has these dotted lines that's selected around anything that's not white, I then go to my keyboard and I just hit the delete key on my keyboard and that is going to delete the background for me. And then I'm just going to click anywhere that's not on the picture, anywhere in this gray area to deselect what I was just touching. And now that the background is gone, I can see all these little spots that it missed. These are just things that were probably on the paper or maybe even specs that were on the um, printer itself. This little faint line right here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a faint line right here. That is actually where the page ended and I think I went just a little bit over where the page ended which is fine because I didn't want to be that I wanted it to be this wide so that's fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to the erase tool. I'm going to click the eraser and then I'm going to make my way back over to the left side and I'm going to click the brush. So this means that I am erasing with the brush. And so I'm gonna go up here to size and I'm just gonna make it the size that I feel like is most easily controllable. And I'm gonna go in and start erasing all of this junk that doesn't belong in here. There's a couple of specs over here. There's some lines. There's some more stuff up in there that I'm gonna get to, but I just need to make my brush smaller before I can do that. So I'm gonna get to all the stuff that I can get to with the big brush first, and then I will move in with the smaller brush. I'm just gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm just gonna go around and erase any dots or specs that I see on the page that just don't belong on there that I don't want to be a part of my background. And if you do accidentally erase something that you don't mean to, like if I was erasing this and I got a little happy handed and I just erased my whole B on an accident, there is always the undo button. So right up here in the top left, you can just undo the last thing you did and you will put your B right back. <laughs> so now I'm going to go over to this side because I knew there wasn't imperfections in here. And I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush. I'm gonna go to the top and I'm gonna drag this sides bar down to a more reasonable size. And I'm just gonna take away some of the stuff that shouldn't be in here, but is too small for me to get with a bigger brush. 
and you could obviously go in and just erase everything with a small brush if you felt like that's what you wanted to do to be more precise but I like to get it done a little bit faster and so I use the big brush first and then I go in and like go around all the edges next just getting anything that might be a little bit too close to the skin or too close to the subject in the picture okay so the next step that I take is now I'm going to darken all my blacks because yeah they're black but like these can be blacker than that <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to the basic brush tool like you can use any brush you want but this one gives me solid color this one would be more like an airbrush this would be more like a marker and like for this one I just want like solid color so I'm just gonna use this pen tool and I'm gonna drag my color selector over to the black area so if you were using a different color like let's say I wanted to match like a blue I would first drag this outer color over to the blue this outer circle and then inside of the triangle you can have variations of the blue that you want but for me I am just want black so I'm just gonna drag it up to the top and that is where I'm going to get my black so I want to make all of the black in this picture darker. The easiest way to do that is to select all the black and only color in the black. So I'm gonna go over here to the select tool again, except this time instead of clicking any area white, I'm going to click any area that's black. And since her shirt has the most black, that's where I'm going to click. So now that you see all these little dotted lines, this means that any area that was attached to this black, so all of these lines is all attached to this black. So it touches all of this, all of the flowers. The one thing it doesn't touch is it doesn't touch this eyebrow because it's not attached to any of the black and it doesn't touch this eye. So I'm gonna have to do that separately afterwards, but I can darken all the stuff that's being selected right now. So I'm already in my regular brush tool. I'm in the black. I'm going to go back up here to the paintbrush. I'm gonna leave this selected. I'm gonna go back up here to the paintbrush. I'm gonna make my paintbrush as big as it can possibly get. And then I'm just gonna color in all of the black. Now because I only selected the black, it is only going to color in everything that I selected. So I can move my cursor over here to this B and it won't affect it at all. It's not coloring in the background. And that's because I own, it's only gonna color in what's selected, which is all of the black. So I'm gonna make sure everything is colored in and then I'm just going to take go back over to the select tool and I'm going to click any area that's not on the picture and that is going to deselect it. And now it's much darker, at least everything that I could touch. So if you can see, this eye is so much darker than this eye, but now I want to get this eye. So I'm going to click on the eye and this is now selecting the eye. I'm going to go back up here to the paintbrush and then I'm just going to color in this section. And since this is the only part that's selected, it'll only color in that. And I'm going to repeat the same step for the eyebrow because that was also not selected in the first go round. And also this side of her nose was not selected. Now she does have freckles on her face. Um, I am okay with those not being as black as they could be. So I'm just going to leave those the color that they are. And I'm not going to go through and like blacken every single one of those. Um, so next I'm just going to continue doing all the darkness. I'm going to do the bees because those should also be black. As black as they can get. So what I'm doing is I'm just going back and forth. I color in a bee. And then I go back to the select tool, I select a different B, go back to the paintbrush, and then I color in that B. And then I have one more B down here. So I'm gonna go back to the select tool, I'm gonna select the B, I'm gonna go back to the paintbrush tool, and I'm going to color in that B that I just selected. And that is basically how I get my darks to be as dark as I can make them without affecting any other colors on the page. So I'm just gonna go back to the select tool and click on the gray area to deselect anything that I still had selected. Okay, so after I do that, the next thing I do is I fix any imperfections. I believe I did this just now. I don't think that was already on there, but I, I can still fix it. So the first thing I do is I go over to the eyedropper tool because yes, her eye is black, but it might not be like a true black. So I want to select whatever color is in here first because I don't want it to be thrown off a little bit. I don't want to make a color darker than her eye and then this one section is going to be much darker than the rest. So I go to select tool. I'm going to select the color that's already in the eye and then I'm going to go over to the paintbrush tool. I'm going to make my brush smaller because it's too big right now. I'm just going to color in that one spot that was not the color it should be. I'm also just going to go over this part a little bit because it's a little gray. Whoops. 
it's a little gray right there so all right that looks good to me and her other eye looks fine there's nothing wrong with it but I do know that her shirt has lots of speckles on it so this is either dust on the um, scanner or it is uh, white just spots that I missed on the actual drawing so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna go over to the eyedropper tool I'm gonna select whatever color black is in there then I'm gonna go back to the paintbrush adjust my size level and then I'm just going to color in any of the white specks that are here because I don't want those sometimes I leave them like sometimes I think they look cool I think it gives it like a nice effect but for this one I just want it to be solid black and so I'm just gonna get rid of any of those imperfections so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a background. So I'm going to go over here to the right side. I'm going to click this little plus sign and that is going to give me another layer. So now that's layer two, which is on top of layer one, but I want layer two to be underneath layer one. So I'm just going to hit this down arrow. So now layer one, my drawing is on top. Layer two, which is just a blank page, is underneath. And so I now want to color in the background. I'm going to make it white. So I'm going to go to my color tool up here. I'm going to go to the left corner of the triangle. I'm going to make it white. I'm going to go back to my paintbrush. And then I'm going to make the size as big as it can get. And I'm just going to color in the background. And because I'm coloring only on layer two, it is going to only color in everything behind layer one and she is in layer one so it's not gonna touch her okay and now she's a little bit higher up than she should be on the page so I'm gonna select layer one again because that's the layer that she's in I'm gonna go over here to this little I don't know what you call this cross tool <laughs> And I'm just gonna move her until she's in the correct position I want to move her over a little bit and I want to move her down a little bit because I don't want that white thing showing at the bottom and This looks pretty good to me. Actually. She looks like she's in a good position. Maybe move her over a little bit There's no white showing at the bottom if you can see there's no white showing at the bottom And she's in a nice position. I like the way it looks and that is basically all I would do to edit my pictures. This video is so long, but I just wanted to give you guys an in-depth look at what I do when I edit my pictures and how I upload them to Instagram. And that is actually the process that I take every single time that I upload a picture. And I usually just um, email that JPEG to myself and then I just download it from my phone. I look at my email on my phone, I download it to my phone, and then from there I upload it to Instagram. And that is the process that I take. I like to have very crisp images on my Instagram. So yes, I do this every single time I upload something to Instagram. It also gives me more incentive to put it on Etsy faster because it's already edited and I just have to upload the file, you know? So it makes it a lot easier for me to just get a handle on everything. So that's all I have for today. Sorry, this video was so long. I just wanted to make sure I could help someone. Hopefully I did. If I didn't, let me know what was confusing or let me know if there's like a certain thing that you want me to edit like a certain picture that you saw before and you were wondering how I got it to appear like that on Instagram let me know and I'll do a video about it okay bye